Six tips on how to choose the best soybean meal for you. A video featuring Dr. Li Hong Zhang, quality control expert, Dr. Louise Souza, swine nutrition and production, and Claire Rallando, business and key account manager. Soybean meal is a very common ingredient all over the world. So you probably all know that it looks like this, uh, that, or maybe this one. Well, just looking at these samples, it's quite obvious that these different soybean meals may have very different nutritional values. How does soybean meal quality impact on feed cost? Let's ask Dr. Luis. Hi, Luis. Hi, Claire. We usually focus on crude protein when dealing with soybean meal, but let's check a bit further with this. Here's what will happen in a least cost formulation when one ingredient has less nutrients than expected. A higher quantity of costly other ingredients will be added to the diet and the price will be uh, higher than expected. So for example, one kilo of palm oil is at least 1.5 times the price of soybean meal. So then if my soybean meal has less energy than expected, uh, in order to maintain the energy level in this feed formulation, I will need to include a higher quantity of oil and then the price will be increased. Now, let's see to what extent a variation in soybean meal quality will impact feed cost. When I push down the energy lever, I can see the surge in feed cost. A simple change by 100 kilocalories, which is about 4.5% in terms of energy, has an impact of $1.7 per ton of feed. So then I'm coming back to the initial energy position and I push down the amino acid lever using the lysine, digestible lysine as a driver. A simple change by 0.19% has an impact of $2.7 per ton of feed. Okay, now at this time, I'm pushing both levers at the same time down energy and digestible lysine, and here's the result, $4.9 per ton of feed. That means a slight variation in energy and protein quality induces a huge overcost in the feed formula. And conversely, if I buy the best quality, I will save 5 USD per ton of feed. Uh, if my feed meal produces 17,000 tons of feed, a month, this makes a saving worth 1 million USD. Wow, thanks Dr. Luis. But is it possible in reality to get such big variations in soybean meal quality? Let's consult with Dr. Li Hong. Hi Li Hong. Hi Cleo. Indeed, despite it being a commodity, soybean meals can be different when it comes to nutritional values. Practically, purchase contracts are based on uh, protein, fat, fiber, for example, some feed meals, they can only accept soybean meals with uh, crude fiber less than 3.5%. But do remember, all these are gross nutrients that do not really reflect what our chickens need. How much of these uh, nutrients can be digested by our chickens is more critical. What Louis and the nutritionist fellows monitoring to formulate their feeds are digestible nutrients. Why should they buy based on crude protein when what matters is digestible lysine then? Well, if you were to live in 1860s, you would have both bought and formulated only on protein content. With the development of HPLC in 1970s, our QC friends could give you the full amino acid profile. It gives you the quantity of nutrients, but still not to which extent they can be digested. In the year 2000, however, new technologies revolutionized the nutrition science. Firstly, protocols of in vivo determination of digestible nutrients were standardized. Secondly, Intensive research programs were implemented to accumulate data. Thirdly, cheaper QC tools were introduced. So, technically, it is now possible to measure the digestible nutrients you want. Let's face the truth. Amino acid digestibility assessments are costly and time consuming. So, if the results are not available in time, how can we 
see the real value of soybeans when buying them. Of course, we can't wait for digestible nutrients using animal tests in common practice. For quality control or formulation purpose, we need some tests or tools which are faster but also accurate. Thanks to the development of near infrared spectroscopy, we have successfully integrated our in vivo expertise together with NIA technology to offer online NIA platform to evaluate the digestible energy and the amino acids fractions. Uh, with less than one minute, we can get the digestible nutrients for our interested ingredients. Now, let me show you the results of our latest survey. Inside this survey, we have collected more than 3,500 soybean meal samples, which were used in feed industry in Asia Pacific countries during 2019. We observed a very large variation for all parameters. See here, the apparent metabolizable energy, which has an average value of 2,330 kilocal per kilogram. But you can see the lowest value can be around 2,110 kilocal per kilogram, while the highest value can be around 2,540 kilocal per kilogram. Meanwhile, the digestible lysine content, it ranges from 2.24 up to 2.9% with an average value of 2.58%. Hmm, I would rather buy this one rather than that one. Now I'm curious to know where I can get it. Indeed, I'm very often asked which is the best country of origin. I guess the best soybean meal comes from Brazil. Yes and no. If you plot the country of origin, here is the global picture, um, you can see on average amino acid, Brazilian soybean meal is rather good compared to Argentina and the US with opposite trends for energy. But look at the individual variations. If you are lucky, you can get an excellent one. How about unlucky? Maybe the digestible nutrients for the soybean meal is like this, although it is from Brazil. So individual variations are much greater than the difference between countries. This is understandable because the quality of the beans may differ even within a country, depending on the local soil, the climate, the bean variety, the weather conditions. Look for the example of Brazil, where some varieties used in the Midwest are different from the seeds used in the South. You are right, Luis. The quality of the beans will surely impact on the quality of the final meal. But on top of that, remember, soybean meal is a co-product from edible oil industry. So each crusher may have a different process resulting in different qualities. See, on this simplified chart showing the possible source of variation. For example, at the extraction step, if there is more oil extracted, there will be less in the meal. And at this toasting step, the toasting technique, toasting temperature and duration time, all this will impact on the quality of final soybean meals, especially on the digestible nutrients. And if the bean is too high in protein, then the soybean meal may be standardized using more herbs. Mm, I see. Beyond the country of origin, it would be good to know more about the crusher and his process. Tell us, what are the two top parameters you would like to see on a COA? Well, we got two points to think here. Number one, it's not the fat content, but the level of metabolizable energy. Because fat is only about 1.8% or 162 kilocalories per kilo of soybean meal, and that explains only 7.7% of the variability in useful energy. See, our soybean meal samples contain 2,200 kilocalories per kilo of metabolizable energy, but 3,795 
kilocalories of gross energy. So in our situation, that means that about 1,600 kilocalories are not accessible to the animal after the digestion process. So I would like this fraction to be reduced as much as possible. Number two is not the protein content, but the digestible amino acid content. So the animals themselves don't need proteins, but they're tiny little components to be able to build their own proteins. I am formulating based on the five first limiting amino acids. So ideally, I would like to see digestible lysine, digestible methionine and cysteine, digestible threonine and digestible tryptophan. Now we understand that the chemical description on a COA doesn't really match your expectation as a nutritionist. Dr. Li Hong, how can you help Louis? In addition to traditional proximate analysis in laboratory, don't forget about our good friend NIR. I can use NIR to determine the nutrient values that Louis wants. It is faster. Uh, with one scan, we can access to several parameters. It is also accurate. When I'm scanning a soybean meal sample, the software will use uh, complex uh, algorithms developed by our researchers and uh, give me the digestible amino acids and the energy immediately. So it is very useful for ingredient quality control. That is nice. Yes, this technique is easy and cheap to operate. So I can use it routinely for you. Let's sum up a few takeaways from this video. Number one, is the Brazilian soybean meal the best? There is certainly no good answer before we have analyzed a sample. Number two, there is no technical limitation to use NIR to get a precise nutritional profile of soybean meal of any supplier. Number three, digestible lysine and metabolizable energy are meaningful parameters that can be added to your quality control routines. Number four, what is a bad soya? A soya with unknown or fluctuating nutritional values. Number five, what is a good soya? A soybean meal whose price is matching its quality or in other terms, whose quality is worth its price. And number six, what is the best soya? The best soya for you may not be the best for me. Every feed mill needs to run their own interest price simulations. And most importantly, let's make sure that QC, nutritionist and purchaser are aware of it and aligned on the decision. We hope that this video might be somehow helpful for your operation. At least we had a lot of fun working on it. A big thank you for taking your time to watch this video. Stay safe and healthy and see you around soon.